Hey everyone, I'm Tween Swag. I am one of the speedrun verifiers and community moderators in the Discord for the fan project Battlefield 2 Modern Combat. And today I'm going to be showing you a how to step process uh, to get your Battlefield 2 Modern Combat disc onto your computer to run in an emulator called PCSX2. Now, there's going to be a few things that you need to do in order to do this legally. Um, again, our official position from the very beginning is we're not going to do anything illegal. We're not going to promote anything illegal. And we're certainly not going to disclose or discuss anything that's going to promote anyone doing anything illegal. So uh, everything that you're going to see here is going to require you to have a few things. The first thing you're going to need is uh, a PS2 that hopefully has less dust than mine. And the reason why mine has so much dust is because it has a power issue. Um, now, there's many reasons why you might be going to the emulator to be running Battlefield 2. Um, maybe you're looking for the performance, maybe you're looking for, uh, fu uh, you know, future proofing. Uh, but m maybe if you're like me, it's simply just because the, your console has, has crapped out on you. Uh, unfortunately, I lost my original Xbox last year to a, a faulty capacitor and uh, my PS2 has a power issue. It just turns off intermittently. And so that's why I turned to setting this all up this morning. So the first thing you need is a PS2. Second thing that you need is a disc of Battlefield 2 Modern Combat. Now, there's a couple of ways to do the process of getting the BIOS of your PS2 onto your computer and the ISO of the game onto your computer as well to function in the emulator. I'm gonna show you the way that I did it today. It seems like it's the easiest and most cost effective. So that is with a DVD, DVD-R. So you're gonna need um, a blank DVD-R, something you can write, uh, and you're also gonna need a, a DVD burner. Uh, now, if you have a laptop and you don't have a DVD burner, you can use an external one. The other thing you'll need for this method is a USB. This is what we're actually gonna be putting the BIOS of the PS2 onto. All right, so the very first step that you need to do, and the link is in the description here, this is the setup guide at pcsx2.net. And the first thing you need to do is actually download uh, the build of, of the emulator itself. It's not gonna run because you need the PS2 BIOS first, but go ahead and download this. This is the, the latest nightly build, and, and that is the one that we're suggesting, at least for now, uh, to go ahead and get into. And so depending on your operating system, uh, you can go ahead and download that uh, directly from here. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is download a file that we're going to burn as an ISO onto your DVD. So go ahead and download the ISO to whichever PS2 model applies to you. I have the PS2 Slims and so I downloaded that and this is the ISO file that we're actually going to burn onto this DVD and this DVD is going to be inserted into your PS2. Now a PS2 can't run a burnt DVD but this is going to be running an ISO off of this DVD and the PS2 is gonna be essentially interpreting this in order to do a different boot. This boot is gonna be the system that we use to dump the BIOS. So if you're totally lost on that, congratulations. I was this morning too, cause this is all new to me. But if you follow this, I promise it's gonna be easy. So go ahead and download this ISO file that, uh, that suits your PS2 model specifically. Now, the next thing that you need is a, uh, a DVD writing program. You can use anything native on your computer if you have one. If not, I've got one called Roxio Easy CD and DVD Burning. They all effectively do the same thing, but what you want to make sure that you do is burn disk image or any uh, format verbiage that follows those lines. The, the idea is that we're going to be burning this uh, onto the disk. For me, it's the all PS2 Slims English language ISO. Yours might be different, but make sure you are selecting the ISO file and um, wherever your DVD writing area is. Now, uh, it's not giving me the option to burn this um, because, well, I've I've already burnt this DVD and I've, I've got that image in there. Uh, if you have any issues during this process, uh, feel free to reach out to us, but it's fairly simple. If you're having any issues at this stage, just reach out to us. Just make sure that you're burning onto the DVD the ISO file that you are downloading uh, via the setup. All right, so the next step after you've got the DVD burned is get out your handy dandy flash drive. We've all got a thousand of these lying around. Put that into your computer and you're going to want to download this file right here. This is the biostrain.elf, funny name. I've already downloaded a bunch of times. Uh, you're gonna put this elf onto your USB drive. All right, so now that you have your biostrain.elf on your flash drive, and you've got your burned DVD that has the ISO file, 
and you've named it something because file management is important. We're gonna go to the PS2 and we're gonna go to the big step. All right, so we got the DVD inside the PS2, which has the ISO burned on it. And we have the biostrain.elf on the USB inside the USB port on the PS2. So what you should be able to do is hit browser. And once you get here, select the DVD. Now, this is a pretty common issue that, that I run into and I'm also seeing on the web. A uh, disc could not be read. There's a couple things you can do. One, verify the fact that you actually got the correct burn of the ISO onto the disc. The first time I did this, I actually didn't verify that I completed the burn. And so I put a blank DVD-R in there. So that's the first thing that you wanna do. Second thing you wanna do, these machines are old. Sometimes the lasers need to be cleaned. So just verify that you've got an actually good laser going on there for you. You can also just open up the, the disc door itself, close it down. And like I have to do with my GameCube, sometimes I need to give it a little little spin start. Uh, so those are a few things that you can um, just, just mechanically make sure that the DVD is gonna be read and it's not the PS2's fault. One thing you can also do is put a DVD, like an actually bought DVD, I put Nacho Libre into my PS2 to make sure it worked. Um, and I've also read that somewhere that can somehow help it kind of get into the right mood, if you will, to make sure to read a DVD. Uh, so I'm gonna go do that and make sure that that's all functioning. All right, so I just restarted my PS2 and it booted right up. I didn't even have to go to the browser. This is not an airtight science. Uh, this is not the way that it's intended to be booted. So we can expect it to not be perfect every time. So maybe you need to put some Nacho Libre into your PS2 to wake it up. Maybe you just need to restart it. Maybe it just needs a little spin start. Um, but ultimately, if it goes to the browser, just go to the area and select the DVD and it's gonna launch it. If you hard start it, it might uh, go to here. So this is where you wanna be. So uh, let's go to file browser, hit circle, and you wanna go down to mass. Mass is going to read your USB drive. And from here, you want to select that biostrain.elf. So that is going to be selecting to run that file that is on your USB drive. And this is going to pull up the BIOS drain uh, sequence. So when you get to this point, it's gonna run the BIOS drain and you're gonna be seeing some files being written onto here. And if you see any errors here, such as USB not found, that was my first instance. I had a brand new USB. You might wanna dig around for an older USB drive. The issue might be that the newest USB drives can't be uh, read on a PS2. So once it goes to finished everything, you can pop out the USB drive and you've successfully pulled the BIOS of the PS2 onto the USB drive. So this step is complete. All right, so we're back at our computer and we have the USB, which has successfully taken the BIOS dump from the PS2. But before we go ahead and interface with that, let's go ahead and put the copy of the Battlefield 2 Modern Combat disc into your DVD drive. And we're gonna create an ISO of that. So copy disc to image. And we're gonna take that DVD. It's a game, but it's the DVD drive and this is where you're gonna to choose to save it. So I've already installed everything from, uh, from PC SX2 and I um, put this into games and you're just gonna hit save right there and it's gonna create an ISO and you can, you can call it whatever you want. It's gonna to default to today's date and time. Uh, go ahead and call it whatever you want. Battlefield 2 Modern Combat, Battlefield 2 is back, Revive Project, whatever you wanna call it. And that's gonna create the image file of your game and that's what we're gonna load into the emulator. Now you've got the three pieces that you need. You've got the emulator installed, you've got the game ISO on your computer saved to a folder that you know where it's gonna be, ideally somewhere within your emulator folders, and you've got the BIOS dump on your USB. So now we gotta put all three together inside the emulator. All right, so inside here, just uh, hit the executable file there, and uh, if, if you want the actual name of that file, it's a pcsx2-qt.exe. All right, so inside the emulator, it doesn't look like much, and that's exactly how it's supposed to look. So what we need to do is we need to go to settings and go up to BIOS. Let's get BIOS um, already figured out. So again, I'm working backwards. I've already done this, so it's gonna look slightly different on your end. Um, but all you need to do is create a BIOS directory. This is where it's going to uh, pull the files. And so put that USB into your computer and drag and drop those files into a place where it makes sense for you. 
it, it already installs with the BIOS folder natively. I had already created um, something and you definitely know I created this because I misspelled it. I called it uh, B-I-S-O, BISO. Um, but if you can put it in BIOS or you can, uh, you know, spell it wrong, put, put it wherever you want. Um, but all you're doing is a selecting a folder. You're not selecting a file, you're creating a directory. So select which folder that you want it to read the files and a, a directory is just gonna tell it where to read those files. And you'll know it's working when you see your specific PS2 uh, on the sticker next to the serial. It will show you the exact build right there and that's mine right there, the, the 79. Uh, 79001 and it's a dot rom so once you have the bios it's now reading your ps2 on your computer pretty sweet so now the next thing that we need to do is add the game so the first time that you do this you can go up to system start file and i have copied that iso file of the game inside of a subfolder within the emulator and i've called it battlefield 2 modern combat dot iso and this should run automatically. So the other thing that you're gonna to need to do is because this is an emulator, you're going to need to configure a controller. So I've got mine set up to the um, Xbox One and I've got a, a thumb drive that's got a, um, a wirelessly connects to my Xbox. If you want to configure your, your gamepad or another controller, you go to settings, controllers, and I just went with the default one right here, controller port one. And in order to map everything, you can go through and set it however you want it. Uh, maybe you're a southpaw, or maybe you know, you've know you got some specific uh, trick up your sleeve. Uh, however you do it, just click on whichever uh, input you want to do, and then just map it to there. Xbox One controller works great. All right, so the last step that we need to do before I send you over to JMM Review in order to get you online is we gotta make sure that your emulator is connecting to the network. Uh, remember that this is a PS2 that does not have Wi-Fi, and so we're going to go into the network settings and tell it how to interpret Wi-Fi. So when you get uh, to this, this is going to be unchecked, enabled. So you need to go to uh, Ethernet, select enabled. Make sure this drop down has sockets. And if you're on Wi Fi, uh, click Wi Fi. If you are hardwired, I believe that should be auto, but uh, don't crucify me if that's incorrect. Um, but for me, I'm on Wi Fi, and uh, all of this stuff on auto should automatically fill in for you. If you guys get any errors along the way, just ensure that it looks exactly like this. And if you get um, anything, Anything that comes up, just message us in the Discord. So I'm just going to conclude this with showing that the online capability is there. So at this point, in order to connect to the game, JMM Review has already put together a, a even more succinct how-to than I put together of how to actually get uh, connected to um, connected to the online capabilities that we have set up for you. And um, so you can go ahead and uh, click that right here. I've also got the link for that uh, down in the description. Uh, but this is what we've got set up for you guys, just to show you that it is working within the emulator. This is the ISO of Battlefield 2 Modern Combat, which I purchased, functioning within the emulator of the PS2, which I own. So none of this has been downloaded. None of this is pirated or anything like that. That's all stuff that's running off of you know, my machines, emulated on my PC and um, everything has connection to the internet once again this feels pretty good so you guys will see that um obviously none of us have been playing enough to get 90 points per hour and the score is a little sus there with uh 1337 uh, but this is what you're going to see once you connect with jmm reviews um how to uh, connect situation all right that's it for this video hopefully that's helpful if you guys have any questions about how to get the emulator going or how to get the PS2 going on online, or if there's other features coming out, please let us know in the Discord, the link to that, and all the resources that you need to get online are in the description of this video. Thank you guys, and we'll see you on the battlefield.